I wonder whether you'll permit me to begin with an English lesson, or more precisely, uh, a poetry lesson. And to do so by using an illustration. Uh, in the good old days when we used hymn books rather more than we do today, certainly within the tradition from which I come, uh, when the hymn was announced and the number given, time was offered for folk to find the hymn by flick, flicking through the pages of their hymn book. And, and so very often the first line of, or the first verse of a hymn or song was read. And I remember memorably one occasion introducing the hymn, Lord, thy word abideth, and proceeding to say, Lord, thy word abideth, and our footsteps guideth, who its truth receiveth, light and joy receiveth. And actually, you should have given me a standing ovation at that point, because uh, I have a slight speech impediment, and it's quite difficult to get the TH sound out, so I had to concentrate really hard to do it just a moment or two ago, uh, because on the previous occasion I did it, my tongue got all over the place, and it came out quite unlike what was written on the page. But we recognize poetry uh, by two things. First of all, we recognize it through the rhythm. Uh, so, la da 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 da, la da 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 da, la da 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 da, la da 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 da. Well, that's a poem, isn't it? And then we also recognise it by the th sounds or the rhyming sounds. Now, in that particular uh, song, it's so obvious because it's th at the end of every line, uh, and, and so it's very clear. So that tends to be how we recognise poetry. Uh, now. When it comes to the poetry of the Bible, it's rather different because Isaiah, when he was writing, was writing in the Hebrew language. And Hebrew poetry doesn't rhyme and have its rhythm like ours does. Uh, the rhythm comes from stressed syllables, not from syllables, and I'm going to leave that aside for you to uh, 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 forget. Uh, but the rhyme occurs through rhyming ideas rather than rhyming words. So it's rhyming ideas, two statements that appear quite similar, that are put alongside of one another to be the rhyme. Uh, well, we'll come back to that in a moment or two, because it's quite important uh, in what I want to share with you. But the passage that we read, had our Old Testament reading, came from the prophet Isaiah. And it's a passage that the Christian church has recognized uh, down the century as one that was a prophecy uttered 800 years before uh, Jesus' birth, but it, ref it refers to him and helps us understand uh, his ministry. So, having introduced you to Isaiah, having introduced you to uh, the way in which he went about writing his poetry, we can turn to one particular verse uh, that I would like to look at today. It's the one that begins, but he was, but all we like sheep have gone astray, every one of us has gone to his own way, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So you notice straight away that uh, the the prophet Isaiah wants to, us, us to recognize that this passage uh, is for us, all we, every one. Uh, he is applying it to you and to me, and he's saying there are no exceptional clauses here, no exceptions to the rule. This, what I'm going to say, applies to every one of us. And he says two things that again appear to be in parallel. We've turned back and we've wandered off. Those are the, that's the uh, rhythm, the rhyme in what he says. Turned away, wandered off. The idea of wandering off, of course, carries with it a certain um, ominous tone. Um, we remember many of us only too well when our children wandered off. Uh, and it was never something that was a good thing. Uh, to wander off carries with it a sort of ominous sense. And then he says, this is how we have turned back and wandered off. 
and he uses two other parallels, except when you think about it, they're not parallel at all. He says, we've gone our own way. It was, I was brought up in that generation, as many of you have been, uh, where Frank Sinatra said he did it his way uh, and uh, regarded that as something that was highly commendable. As far as Isaiah is concerned, to do it our own way is not commendable at all. It, in fact, uh, and it's not even doing it our way, because he says, when we do it our way, we're like sheep. Now, sheep don't do it their way. They simply follow the crowd, don't they? I remember when I was at a university more years ago than I care to rem remember uh, that I was visiting my tutor and we, we were discussing the way in which certain things uh, symbolize what we do or who we are. The, the Union flag represents uh, who we are. We're British uh, people. And he said, you know, you're wearing clothes that uh, are symbolic of who you think you are. And he pointed out that I had long hair and a shaggy beard and I was wearing boots and I was wearing jeans uh, and a donkey jacket. And he said, that is the uniform of someone who is pretending to be a rebel against the past. And I thought, you're absolutely right. Uh, in saying I'm not one of those people, I've simply conformed to a new uniform. I'm, I'm a sheep following the way of my world. And that's what Isaiah is really saying here. He's saying uh, we've turned away. We've wandered off in our own direction. We think that we're doing our own thing, but in reality, all we're doing is following the crowd. And that, he says, is characteristic of every human being. He doesn't here, of course, tell us where we've wandered from. But as the verse goes on, it's very clear that the problem is we've wandered from God. We've wandered away from him. And we've simply joined the crowd in doing so. That's uh, our problem, he says. And then he uses this word iniquity to describe what we've done. I remember once being told that there's a certain tribe in the middle of the uh, Saudi Arabian desert who have 2,000 words for camel. I imagine they probably have a good, a very rich vocabulary for sand as well, because when all you see is camels and sand, uh, you probably do develop a very rich vocabulary to describe the different types of camel and the different state of the sand and so on and so forth. Uh, and the Bible has a rich vocabulary for what it calls sin. But the deepest word is this word iniquity, because it speaks of the cancer that lies at the heart of human experience, uh, a cancer which is uh, terminal. Uh, it's utterly destructive. Uh, so that even if we come to the point where we realize we've taken the wrong path, and we're going off in the wrong direction, and we find that that path ultimately doesn't satisfy. We can't find our way back because there is this problem at the heart of who we are, uh, our iniquity, our sin, uh, that we have taken the wrong path, we've departed from God, and in departing from him, we cannot find our way back. And that's the tragedy, says Isaiah, of human experience. And if we know ourselves sufficiently, it's the tragedy of each of our experience too. But it's not Isaiah's last word, because he says, the Lord has laid on him, and he's referring uh, by means of prophecy to Jesus, the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's the great message of the Christian faith, isn't it? Uh, that what, however much we've made up, uh, messed up, however badly we're out of sorts, however far we've departed from God, 
however deep the disease that we suffer from uh, and find ourselves incapable of finding our way back, Jesus has dealt with the problem. He's dealt with our sin. He's dealt with the penalty of sin. He's dealt with iniquity. He's brought healing and help to set us back on the path that leads uh, to God. Now, one final observation to make, and that's this, uh, that in the Hebrew text of this verse, it begins with one particular word, which is translated in the English versions, all of us, or all we. And the same word ends the verse, uh, iniquity of us all. It's sort of like an envelope. Uh, and the same word is found at the beginning and the end of the verse. And I'm sure that's deliberate and it's part of the poetry uh, that Isaiah uh, has uh, put down here. All of us, like sheep have gone astray, we've turned to our own way, but to all of us, the Lord has laid on him, that is on G in Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So this verse is... First of all, bad news. It describes us as uncomfortably, uh, with uncomfortable reality, the truth of what we are as human beings. But it's good news too, because it says in our condition of abandonment of God, God did not abandon us. Our Creator continued to love us. And through the self-offering of Jesus as our great high priest, which was our other reading uh, this morning from the epistle to the Hebrews. God has put the matter right. We can find our way back to God. We can find our way back to the path that brings genuine and real uh, and eternal quality of life because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's amazing what can be packed into just a few words, isn't it? Uh, and Isaiah packs all of that into this one verse uh, to remind us of who we are, but also to remind us of who our God is and thereby to give us hope even when we ourselves feel hopeless.